follows an extract from my book Fête Fatale, available from Amazon. Chapter 18, Part 2 Maddox walked into the flower shop and was surprised to see Henrietta talking to Nicola. Toby was bending over, dipping his fingers into the buckets of water which fed the flowers. As the doorbell jangled, both of the ladies looked up. Hello, Bobby. Have you come to buy me some flowers? said Henrietta. Confused and flustered, Maddox mumbled something about him not thinking of it, but he would if she wanted him to. Fortunately, he was saved by Toby getting a little too exuberant in his bucket ministrations and one of the buckets toppled over, sloshing water onto the floor. As luck would have it, the bucket only held a little water and so disaster was averted on both counts. As Henrietta walked off to find the mop, Nicola approached Maddox to see what he wanted. If it's not flowers that you're after, then I assume that you're here on police business. How can I help? It's something of a long shot, but I'm hoping that you can remember who bought tickets for Kirsty's garden tours on the day of the fete, said Maddox. Now you're asking me. Nicholas sat down on a stool and casting her mind back, she checked off a list of names which came to her in fits and starts. After about half a dozen names had been written into Maddox's notepad, Nicholas stemmed the tide and paused. I think that it would be easier for me to try and list those that didn't buy tickets. After that, I'll try and think of anybody who bought tickets that stood out from the main community here. Maddox underlined the section that he'd been writing in his notepad and began a new filing system for the next set of names. Henrietta came into the shop carrying three mugs of tea and Toby trundled behind her carrying a plate of biscuits. He pulled up a small stool to sit next to Maddox and closely watched him taking notes. Maddox accepted such camaraderie without question and absent-mindedly shuffled aside to make room for him. I think that nearly all of the ladies of the village bought tickets, except for those of us who were tied to a duty at the fet. If you can leave it with me, I can make a list of those of us who were tied to a stall or busy in the refreshments hall. Of the men of the village, Mike Simmons was one of the first. He'd be waiting to cast his expert eye over the proceedings and he'd be early so as to be ready for the poultry competition. Drew, Nathaniel and Terry were busy with their vehicle display and I doubt that John T or Matt were very interested in flowers. When they weren't busy, they'd be in the badger as were most of the other men. Were there any strangers? Can you tell me anything about any of the unknown visitors, said Maddox. That's just it, isn't it? They're unknown. Oh, there were a couple of tourists that bought a ticket quite early on in the day, I think. They said that they were having a driving holiday around the Midland Shires and were staying at the Raven in Harrisfield. They were thrilled at happening to be here on the day of the fete. They said it gave their holiday an authentic feel, much better than an organised coach trip. If they were staying at the Raven, I should be able to find their names. They only have a couple of guest rooms, so it shouldn't be difficult. Can you describe them to me? The man might be in his mid-forties, but his wife seemed a lot younger. They sounded American, but they didn't look it. What did they look like? They both had tanned skin, a natural tan, and they both had dark hair. I suspect his hair colour came out of a bottle, but it matched. He would have had dark hair when he was younger. They looked kind of Turkish or Greek. They were probably Greek. He had a big nose. Maddox tried to keep his excitement hidden and asked Nicola if she could think of anything else, if only to deflect attention from his expression and to give himself time to think. As soon as there was a natural pause in the conversation, Maddox thanked Nicola for her help and, after arranging to collect the list, he stood up to leave. Are you going back to the station? If you are, I'll walk back with you, said Henrietta. Saying that this was so, the three of them left the shop together. Unbidden, Tony walked up to Maddox and grasped his hand, ready to walk with him. Maddox looked at Henrietta in surprise and then shrugged his shoulders and walked on. Inwardly, he was bursting with joy. Where are you off to now? Are you heading home? asked Maddox. I'm just calling back for a few things, but then we're going to catch a bus to Harrisfield. The holidays are nearly over and I promised Toby that we'd take a picnic to the park there. I know that the green here is lovely, 
but sometimes you just need a change, don't you, said Henrietta. I'm going to Harrisfield too. I need to check up on the names of those guests. If you just give me 20 minutes, I can give you a lift if you like. I'm due to go off duty in a bit, so I was going to change before I pick up the station car. That's really kind of you, but Toby was looking forward to a ride on the bus. I know it takes three times as long to get there, but that's part of the fun, I'm afraid. Feeling rebuffed, Maddox concealed his disappointment. Of course, I didn't think about that. I used to love a bus ride myself. If you're going off duty and you don't need to rush, why don't you come on the bus with us? Within seconds, Maddox's emotions had plummeted to the depths to then be immediately restored to the heights. I haven't been on a bus for ages. I'd like that, he said. Shall I meet you at your house in about half an hour? The next 30 minutes saw Maddox tearing around at home as he sought to quickly change his clothes as he swapped his outfit about three times before hastily hugging his mum goodbye and leaving again. He ran to Henrietta's house but stopped to catch his breath before he turned the corner into her street. Maddox knocked on the front door but a call from the kitchen brought him round to the back. I've made a couple of extra sandwiches, there should be enough to go round, said Henrietta. I didn't realise that you'd thought of me joining your picnic. Don't let me steal your food. It's only just a few nibbles. It's just a gesture. Toby will be far too excited to want to eat much. They waited at the edge of Main Street until the bus, which ran straight through to Harrisfield, pulled up. There were only a couple of other passengers and Toby insisted that they all sit together at the back of the bus. In between commenting on the passing scenery and playing I Spy, which got rather confused owing to Toby's limited comprehension of spelling, Henrietta asked about Maddox's reason for going to Harrisfield. It's difficult to know what I can and can't say, I'm afraid, said Maddox. Oh, don't worry about telling me all the details, just tell me what you can. If it makes you feel any better, I know the whole John Barlow thing has taken another turn. Beth has called us all to another meeting at the Blue Willow Tea Rooms this Friday. I gather that something rather sensational has cropped up. Maddox was quite adept at holding two independent conversations at once and answered Toby's questions about the cows they had just passed before seamlessly returning to his conversation with Henrietta. I'd forgotten that you were one of Beth's underground agents. You probably know more about things than I do. James has asked me to find out who was where, but this foreign couple could be the missing link to a bit of the puzzle we've got. Either that, or I'm on a wild goose chase. Oh well, at least you'll get a couple of ham sandwiches for your trouble. The bus stopped by the play area, and Maddox hauled the picnic rucksack onto his back to carry it over to a grassy area. As Henrietta laid out the rug and food, Maddox ran around with Toby and pushed him on the swings. They both went down the slide together and would have gone on playing indefinitely if Henrietta hadn't called them over to eat. You've saved me a lot of running round this afternoon. You must be exhausted. I think you've even managed to outplay Toby and that's saying something. After eating their picnic in peace and quiet as Toby was too tired to interrupt them, they packed away and walked to the raven to attend to business. Maddox gave Toby a piggyback as he was too tired to walk. At the pub, despite remonstrance from Henrietta, Maddox bought a glass of squash, a wine spritzer and a pint of pale ale. We're in a holiday mood, so let's have a drink, he said. Henrietta and Toby sat in the beer garden while Maddox conducted his inquiries and a short time later he joined them outside to enjoy his pint. I've got a couple of names. Whether they'll be of any use remains to be seen. I'll try and follow up where they live and see if I can speak to them. I'll see what Inspector James makes of them. Or maybe I should just give them to you and let you lot sort it out at your Blue Willow meeting. We're not in competition, you know. Beth just suggested that we might be able to help because we could access certain things more easily, not being bound by all the red tape that you have to deal with. You've got a point there. I can't breathe until I've got the correct form signed. The bus journey home was quiet, but it was a contented silence rather than an awkward lack of conversation. Maddox carried the sleeping Toby back home, but he handed him over to Henrietta as they approached the door. He made no attempt to imply that he wanted to be invited in, but made it clear that he now intended to go home. He didn't want to overdo things. 
He was grateful for the afternoon that they'd just had and didn't intend to push his luck. There was a delicate situation here and he had no intention of spoiling his chances by rough management now. For the full book of Fête Fatale, available in paperback or as an e-book, follow the link in the cards in the description box or find details on my website at SharonBill.com. Thanks for listening.